Joe is very kind, very kind indeed. He, he likes, when he's out, he's got a bit of money, he will buy the grandchildren, people will buy him presents, sweets or little presents, and he, he gets on very well with children. He loves children, he loves to play with them. Nan is an excellent mother and an excellent wife. There's no doubt about it. I wouldn't have nobody else but Margaret. Oh, it wasn't too bad. Joey was about seven or eight years of age when actually uh, your, your nan moved in with me virtually. Margaret was married before to Ronnie Sheard and they found out when he, Joey was about three or four years of age that he wasn't learning properly, etc. And he had a penicillin injection or put him into a massive fit and then since then, obviously, he's had fits. The government and places like that don't really look in to see what needs are needed for people like Joey. His autism and he's a bad epileptic. Just a normal, routine young girl. Waitress, cashier, cleaner. Lived at home in my grandfather's house with my mum and my dad my older brother, my older sister and my younger sister. Just a normal life going to school. We weren't rich or anything like that. We did normal things, like going out to play, went to school, left school, got a job, got a few jobs. <laughs> I was pretty lucky when I was a bit younger because I had a gorgeous mum that looked after him for us if we went out. She was brilliant. When Mum was no longer with us, that's when we found it very hard. In 1964. I was actually standing outside the Royal Oak pub in Sparkbrook. I was walking up the road and he started whistling and was saying, what are you doing tonight? And I just walked past. <laughs> And that's how I first met your nan, really. Well, I mean, a step-parent does take on the responsibility of another child. I think that's hard in itself, and particularly with Joey's condition, it must have been twice as hard. It makes no sense you're picking on a group of people who have fought so hard to be equal in this society. We got the right to education, we came out of care homes, of institutions in the 80s. And it's like all that work by people, by generations of people, is gone in one sweep from this government. Janet Moss and sister. He was 13 when I was born. Considering what Grandad took on, it must again, I don't think he probably realised just to the extent and the severity of Joey's condition. So I think he's managed well throughout the years. He's probably got frustrated as well. Trouble is with him, he doesn't want to leave, you know, living around his mum and that. And he thinks what it is, because I've always been with him, that mum should be there everywhere he goes. Not really a lot physically, more so mentally than physically. His mind is roughly a third of his age, what he is now. Joey's conditions are he's obviously got the mind of a child about eight and nine. He can't really dress himself properly and also he can't speak properly. As reading and writing is concerned, it doesn't exist. He can write Joey on the Christmas card or a birthday card and that's about it. Because there's always something to do, no matter what. You've got always got to be there 24 hours. If he has seizures, there's got to be somebody there with him all the while. You can't really let him go out to go shopping or go down the road on his own because he has really got no road sense. And if he walked over, he could get knocked down. And that. So you've always got to be aware. He became obsessed with... Um different things. For instance, he, he loves he loves Elvis. David, Joey's favourite thing is Elvis Presley. He likes old movies, he sits there and watches. He don't really understand them, but he, he, he gets the gist of them sometimes. You know, you'd look at him a lot throughout the day, probably have his headphones on, listening to Elvis or be watching an Elvis movie.
Minister has repeatedly brought up uh, the devastating impact on disabled people from the UK benefits uh, system. The Government plans to cut support for people with long-term health difficulties by £30 a week. Two thousand and thirteen. Um, my heart stopped of a night. When your mind's always on the run, sort of thinking, you know, what's going to happen, and one thing or another, and then you worry. If she was able to get that support, I think she would feel as though she'd be able to cope with it better. But she's had a pacemaker fitted, and lately she hasn't been too bad, touch wood, etc. She as long as she takes things easy and don't do too much, she's all right. But she carries on no matter what, and she still does the housework and the cooking. She needs a break from him sometime, because otherwise she's got him seven days a week, and these places at the moment are being closed down by this, this stupid government. They think they can do without these places and put them in special places didn't work like that. I think the social care that was available 15, 20 years ago um, was very personal. It seemed to be more consistent. I feel as though that's dropped by the wayside. But at one time we used to have a carer come to the house, a young lad who was a bit of a punk rocker, who used to take Joey out the pictures, etc., and, and take him shopping and things like that, look after him. But that, that all stopped. It was a volunteer worker, so it just fizzled out. Of her partner, he doesn't have no one to come to the house. For Nan, I feel as though, yep, again, there could be that support where it allows her, if you like, to have a breather. He did have a girlfriend once at the uh, centre, uh, but he didn't take much notice. He just used to bring it. She was coming to the house, quite a nice looking girl, actually. But she was okay, she was quite a nice looking girl. And the had her for ooh, two or three years, I think. She'd come to the house and sit with him sometimes, etc. But apart from that, that was about it. That's the only one he's ever had. Ian Duncan Smith, do you understand that among a lot of disabled uh, campaigners and so forth, there will be a certain amount of hollow laughter because they still see you as the man that supported things like the benefits cap, that supported the bedroom tax, that supported lots of things which have caused real hardship to people at the bottom of the heap. And they, they, they see you as the bad guy. I don't think people are aware of all these conditions and I don't think anybody can ever empathise until they're put in that situation. Um, I think people do judge as well. They see it from the outside and often label that person who does have uh, learning disorders as being naughty or being defiant. Some people, like my friend once, Murray Scucci, he, he was a bit frightened of Joey because simply he was different. Because Joey being different, some people cannot cope with that. I didn't really understand it until I was a parent myself. But you see, you didn't know about autism till I'd say the past 15 years. Before that, it was never known. It was just that you were mental impaired. Nanny didn't get her pension until she was 70 odd years of age. And then as soon as she got her pension, they took the care loans off her. But you still got to look after your child, no matter what. Because you still have to pay if he goes to respite or if he needs anything, or you have to pay some because that money is to help you to pay people to look after him while you do things. Well, you don't get it anymore, but you still have to pay. So hyperactive, estranged. Got to be attention, top of attention, not once, all the while. As a young person, I thought he was going to grow out of it. I thought it was just, just a condition and as he got older, he would, he would get better. But we also learn, and I think we're really starting to learn this every single week, that Theresa May is a class act at not answering the question. Theresa May scores incredibly highly, mm. elegantly and evasively, saying absolutely nothing whatsoever. 
when, I met, when we first went with her, I met her. She was lovely. And Nan's always been a nice looking lady as well. And she's a very, very kind lady. Too kind someone. Heart as big as gold. She'll, she'll give a last penny to the children. If I said they give us a ten out of your purse, that's all she got left, she would give it me. Any money in her purse, she would give you the whole lot. She wouldn't worry about what got no money left, she would give it you. I think they need the support. I think without a doubt they should look into it and consider age because obviously as we all know as anybody gets older the body starts to deteriorate. I think it's put a lot of strain on her. She's She, she hasn't really shown it at times just uh, what exactly it's done because she's just gone on with it. Um, Nan is very much like that just has dealt with it in her own way and just exactly done that, just got on with it. I feel they should assess each person individually and what they are capable of. Oh, she's been brilliant, absolutely brilliant, you know, as the end of the day, too, I think he's, she looks after Joe as she shaves him still, showers him, etc., and makes sure he's got all clean clothes on. And upstairs, obviously, he's got everything he wants. His video, his television, etc., and he likes to go to bed early and put his pyjamas on. But apart from that, he's all right. He's, he's absolutely marvellous. I mean, now he's 60 years of age now, so it ain't too bad, is it? I don't believe Joey is aware of his condition. I don't think he's aware of his emotions, what makes him feel sad, what makes him feel happy. Um, it all, almost seems that he's always on the same level. Remember that it's a child with difficulties and not a child who's being difficult.